You're watching Coffee Chat! Hey y'all, I just needed to take a break from my waitressing job at Merlot's just so I could come here and talk about True Blood with y'all. It's back! True Blood is back, everybody. Whatever problems you have in your life, it doesn't matter what it is, watching True Blood will fix those problems. This past Sunday night was the season premiere of True Blood. It was amazing. This season premiere started quick and fast and it was carrying through right exactly where we left off last season four. This is season five. True Blood knows how to start a season right. They gave me Jason Sackhouse butt naked. They gave me Eric Northman butt naked. They gave me Sam Merlot butt naked. I'm not really interested in Sam Merlot, but he's a good guy. Can we talk about Debbie? I am so happy that Debbie is dead. I hate Debbie. I've hated Debbie since the day I saw her. Suggy admitted that it was not self-defense that made her kill Debbie, but it was actually that she just wanted to kill Debbie. And I was like, uh, duh. We all know you wanted to kill Debbie. We all did. <laughs> There is no way I'm going to let anybody arrest Suki for shooting Debbie because Debbie deserves to be dead and she was a stupid werewolf. We don't need no more werewolves. Suki did Alcee a favor because Debbie is not good for him. Alcee's a really nice guy and Debbie's a bitch. As if things aren't spooky enough, Jesus's body is nowhere to be found. It is missing, y'all. That's spooky. Dead bodies disappearing, that's spooky. Jessica was having like a big party, almost like a rave at her apartment. And then Jason Stackhouse showed up and he was like, I'm off duty, y'all. It's cool. How epic was that rock band scene with Jason, Jessica, and her friends? They were rocking out all hardcore rock and roll, cherry bomb singing and going crazy. I was like, y'all need to calm down. I thought it was so cute when Jason came up to the microphone with Jessica and he was like, cha 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 cherry bomb. I do not like that new guy that Jessica's trying to see. He looks like a douchebag. I would never pick that guy over Jason Stackhouse. I mean, please, let's get real. It was so heartwarming to hear Jason really talk about his emotions in that car to that stranger blonde girl. Sam Merlot is up to his shape-shifting ways as usual. It is so awkward seeing all those werewolves just running around here and there. I really think that werewolf pack was really just turning into werewolves and following Sam Merlot so that one woman could show off her boobies. Girl, cover up, please. You are not Suggy Stackhouse. We have to talk about Belle and Eric. Oh my god, Eric Northman. I am so grateful for any time that Eric Northman is naked. <laughs> I cannot handle it when Eric Northman is naked. I mean, he is too sexy. I just need to take a moment to say thank you to the writers of True Blood. Every time I watch an episode, I'm a little bit nervous. Like, is there going to be enough naked Eric Northman in this? And there always is. When Eric and Bill sensed that Suki was in trouble, Eric said, F Suki. Eric? You can't say that. I thought you loved Suki. I know she rejected you, but that's because she didn't want to choose between the two of you. I really thought that they were going to be together. And I was really disappointed when she didn't choose Eric. But I understand where Suki's coming from. Because if I had two vampires coming after me, I'd be like, do I want the one with the brown hair or the one with the blonde hair? The one with the blonde hair, I mean, it would be hard, but I would choose Eric Northman. I don't mind seeing Suki and Eric hook up, but I do not want to see his sister all over him. I mean, that is just... It's as if everybody's, I mean, it's just a little bit upset and I feel like everybody's getting a piece of air except for me. I feel so bad about Tara's head getting blown up. I mean, she has some attitude problems, but she did not deserve to get shot in the head like that. I cannot believe that it was Lafayette's idea to turn Tara into a vampire. It's as if you are completely ignoring Tara's feelings about vampires. But Pam agreed to it, so there we go. I loved seeing Pam wearing that Walmart sweatsuit. She looks so good in yellow. I'm like, girl, you need to wear yellow more often. We got Tara in the ground with her brains all blown out, and we're like, this is gonna work out just fine, huh? Is she gonna be a vampire, or is she gonna be a zombie? All throughout the episode, I was like, is Tara gonna live? Is she gonna die? Is she gonna die, or is she gonna live? Is she gonna come back like normal Tara? Is she gonna be like pissed Tara? Wait a minute, Tara's always pissed. All right, she's gonna be normal Tara. They made us think, well, Tara's gonna wake up and she's gonna be alive and she's gonna be a vampire. Then at the end when Pam came out and Tara didn't come out, we were like, she's dead. Tara's dead. She did not wake up as a vampire. She's dead. And then they did a double twist. And they were like, boom, Tara's alive again. Tara came shooting up on the ground. She was all quick and she got in Suki's face and she was like, ooh. And I was like, whoa, and you know Tara's pissed. 
Tara, I know how you feel. I've had a friend betray me before, and it hurts. All right, y'all, that's it for now, but don't forget to watch True Blood, and don't forget to tip your waitress. That wraps up Coffee Chat. Announcement, announcement. I'm gonna be at VidCon with my damn channel. I'm sorry, did I say that too fast? I will be at VidCon. I hope I can see some of you guys there. If you're going to VidCon, let me know. I really hope you guys don't mind the way I smell.